Hi everyone, I welcome you all to my channel Nursing360. So today's classes we are going to discuss about the cerebrovascular accident or which is also known as stroke. It's a emergency neurological conditions. We are going to have a class today and at the end of the class you will have a complete crystal clear knowledge about the strokes. So basically this class I will take in two part. So today at the part one I will be discussing about the introductions, the definitions of the stroke, the types of the stroke and the causes of the stroke in details. And also we are going to discuss about the how can we predict the stroke or the cerebrovascular accident which is going to happen in future for a patients. Okay. So first let's start with the a classical definitions of the stroke and therefore we will study the explanations and the concept of the stroke. So what do you mean by stroke? According to the American Heart Associations, the stroke is a abrupt onset non-convulsive focal neural deficit more than 24 hours of total ischemic attack or the hemorrhage inside the brain. It means a person's neurological deficits or disturbance due to the ischemic attack to the brain. It means either the lack of the blood supply to the brain or else there is a hemorrhage which is occurring inside the brain. So any one reason which will be leading to the neurological deficit of the person more than 24 hours and at the progressive and primary stages there should be no convulsions that is known as stroke. Okay. So here I have used two words. First the transient ischemic attack or hemorrhage of into the brain. So what do you mean by that? The ischemic attack why it will occur because when the blood will be traveling to the brain from the aorta I mean heart aorta when the blood will travel through the carotid arteries or the vertebral arteries if any blockage is there which will be going inside the brain and any cerebral arteries branches if it is blocked there is a restrictions of the blood flow for a prolonged time right and the restrictions of the blood flow will lead to the ischemia of the brain and finally prolonged time if it is progressing it will lead to the tissue death or tissue necrosis and that will lead to the stroke or else due to over pressure if any arteries inside the brain got rupture damage what will happen the blood will accumulating inside the brain or the hemorrhage right intracranial hemorrhage so that reason also the stroke can occur okay so I am clarified with this definitions and some explanations now we will study the two types of the stroke so based upon that pathophysiology we have especially two types of stroke that is hemorrhagic stroke due to the weaker blood vessels rupture or else plaque or clot or any emboli it means the movable clot will stop the blood flow which will lead to the ischemia and that will lead to the stroke and based upon ischemic stroke we have a two types that is either it is can from thrombus either it can from the emboli it means the plaque or the clot can occur inside the artery which will not move but also which will restrict the blood flow or else inside the brain the clot can travel and it can block the blood flow which will lead to the ischemia or ischemic stroke. So we have especially two types that is hemorrhagic stroke and another one is ischemic stroke. Now first we will start with the hemorrhagic stroke. 
okay so let's take a very close look of the hemorrhagic stroke that how hemorrhage can occur inside the brain and what all the process it can lead to the stroke and what can be the features of the hemorrhagic stroke many of the book you will have a uh, many explanations of the hemorrhagic stroke right so you will be uh, some of the books you may see that only hemorrhagic stroke has written like this there is a bleeding occur due to the weak blood vessels so before move on to the hemorrhagic stroke first we will study about the a blood supply of the brain right so we know that the purified blood from the left ventricle through the aorta it will transfer to the brain first by the two main carotid artery and the two main carotid artery will be dividing into two external carotid artery and two internal carotid artery which will be there right side and the left side of the neck right this is the external carotid artery this is the internal carotid artery right two external and two internal so the external carotid artery is mainly supplying the blood to the various part of the face and the neck and the internal carotid artery is distributing into smaller artery that is known as cerebral artery okay and that is supplying i mean the internal carotid artery is supplying the blood towards the ophthalmic or the eye as a ophthalmic cerebral artery it is also providing the anterior cerebral artery which is supplying the blood towards the anterior portions of the brain then the middle part of the brain also are getting supplied by the middle cerebral artery which is a part of a internal cerebral artery and then some few of the blood it is transferring to the posterior part of the brain as a posterior communicating artery and few of the amount of the blood it means the purified blood will move towards the ventricle or the ventricular spaces right and the posterior part of the brain is getting the blood supply let's make it drawing here by the vertebral artery and that is supplying the mainly posterior part of the brain as usual a few amount is also traveling to the it means the blood is transferring to the ventricular spaces so that is the basic blood supply of the brain so who is under the internal uh, you know carotid artery branches that is middle anterior ophthalmic posterior communicating cerebral artery and some of the thing is ventricular supply is they're doing so this many parts are the internal carotid artery branches clear and external we know it is providing the blood to the face and neck and posterior this part and few of the blood is coming through the this part like this is getting the blood supply by the vertebral artery right so these are the basic you know blood supply of the brain so now how the hemorrhagic stroke occur let me do a drawing so i can make you understand the types of the hemorrhagic stroke also with the complete explanations so a few minutes back when we have studied about the hemorrhagic stroke we have discussed that a small point that is it occurs due to the any cerebral arterial damage or rupture will lead to the bleeding inside the brain and with the blood will getting clot and progressive in clotting in nature that will lead to the neuro deficit of the patients or focal neural deficit of the patients right that we have studied uh, but now we will study in details that how the hemorrhagic stroke can occur and what all the types of the hemorrhagic stroke it is there okay so first hemorrhagic stroke means what due to intracranial hemorrhage right or intracranial bleeding the blood will be accumulating inside the brain and that will lead to the stroke so the first causes is 
intracranial bleeding or intracranial hemorrhage ICH we can say so based upon the clotting positions we can differentiate or we can classify the hemorrhagic stroke into two types okay first the extra axial and the second is intra axial extra axial means we have to remember one thing so there is a picture i will come to that okay so when i say extra axial hemorrhage or bleeding we have to remember one thing there is no brain tissue involvement there is no brain tissue involvement but above the brain tissue who is there meninges layer and above that skull bone is there so that thing will get involved and there the bleeding will occur am i clear so let's make you understand very clearly in extra axial hemorrhage is also classified into three types that is epidural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage and the sub arachnoid hemorrhage so what is epidural space above the dura mater above the dura mater and below the skull bone this space okay first meninges layer who is there topmost layer is dura mater second or middle layer is arachnoid matter and third innermost layer is pia matter so top layer who is there dura ap means above dura right so above dura matter and below the skull bone the space if it is occupying with some clot that is called epidural hemorrhage and the space below the dura matter who is there arachnoid matter so below dura matter and above arachnoid matter the space is known as sub arachnoidal space in that space if any bleeding or any clotting is forming that is known as sub dural hemorrhage and the space between arachnoid matter and the pia matter in the middle most layer and the inner most layer the space is known as sub arachnoidal space in that space if any bleeding occur that is known as sub arachnoidal or sub arachnoid hemorrhage am i clear so this extra axial who will involve especially the skull bone i mean the below the skull bone to the meninges layer but it won't affect the brain tissue and this extra axial it means the epidural subdural and sub arachnoid hemorrhage occur especially in the cases of any assaulting any trauma any injury okay directly penetrating through the skull and skull bone will lead to the such kind of hemorrhage and such kind of lead to the stroke now come to the intra axial hemorrhage intra axial hemorrhage it's mainly divided into another two subtypes that is intra parenchymal hemorrhage or intra cerebral hemorrhage both are same and intra ventricular hemorrhage now look at this picture very carefully okay here what happen here this is the brain tissue if all the arteries are moving over here right internal carotid arteries all are moving over here if any part the blood vessels rupture and the bleeding occur inside the brain parenchyma tissue see the picture very carefully this one right i'm talking so this can lead to the intra parenchymal hemorrhage or intra cerebral hemorrhage clear and this is the ventricular space if any bleeding occur or any blood vessels rupture about this places so the bleeding will accumulations in that place right unusual bleeding clot formations will be there in the ventricular spaces and that will lead to the intra ventricular hemorrhage so this is the exact type of the hemorrhagic stroke okay extra axial and intra axial extra axial there is no brain tissue involvement only the meninges layer and the skull bone will be affecting due to any trauma or due to any injury 
but in the intraaxial cases what will happen the brain tissue and the ventricle spaces will get affected so there are two types that is intraparenchymal or intracerebral hemorrhage and the other one is intra ventricular hemorrhage so now this is causes can by you know what can be the main causes of that trauma and this is the causes of especially in the hypertension cases when the blood pressures will be too high what will happen the blood vessels any blood vessels can get damage right or any uh, you know vessels weakness is there okay if, if the blood vessels is too weak the pressures can't you know tolerate the pressures will damage the blood vessels and that particular part will have a hemorrhage right and that also can lead to the intraaxial hemorrhage am i clear with the types and this is the main causes will be especially the hypertension cases okay so this is the exact types of hemorrhagic stroke okay so whenever you are writing the hemorrhagic stroke please don't forget to men mention this two point extraaxial and the intraaxial and also if you are getting the time make the simple drawing so the teacher can understand yes this student have a exact knowledge about the hemorrhagic stroke okay now let's move to the ischemic stroke okay so before i move on to the ischemic stroke i forgot to mention one point that is in the cases of hemorrhagic stroke there will be a four classical features of the hemorrhagic stroke okay which will be there in the patients so first there will be a increased blood pressures decreased heart rate or the bradycardia altered sensorium it means the patient's focal neural deficit will be very much rapidly progressing in this hemorrhagic cases okay until unless we are doing anything management there will be a rapid focal neural deficit cases that will lead to the altered sensorium and increased icp will be there because of the excessive blood accumulations of the brain and that will lead to the severe headache of the patients so if that four classical features is present inside the patients we can call it as a cushion reflex okay cushion reflex c u s h i n cushion reflex okay so this is a very informative for you that what is cushion reflex which kind of uh, you know stroke it can occur the answer will be hemorrhagic stroke and what all the cushion reflex first increased blood pressures second decreased heart rate or bradycardia third altered sensorium and severe headache due to increase icp okay that four classical features is known as cushion reflex so now come to the ischemic stroke what is the main reason of the ischemia either it can be thrombus or plaque formations either it can be emboli what is the emboli it's the movable clot okay so now look at this picture very carefully right what happened when from the heart from the heart left ventricle the purified blood will move towards the brain right if any you know artery got a permanent block or permanent clot or partially clot what will happen it will restrict the blood flow right and that restrictions of the blood flow will lead to the slowly ischemic conditions to the brain and that will lead to the cell death or the tissue necrosis of that particular part where the blood supply is going right so that will lead to the ischemic stroke but what is the reason behind that either any thrombus or either any plaque formations right now what is emboli if anything small clot that will travel into the inside the brain tissue like this the round round shape no it is the clot to make you understand i am just drawing it so any artery got blocked it can occur any part of the brain right anterior part middle part posterior part any part of the brain can get 
emboli entry so that emboli what it will do it will suddenly block the suddenly block the blood supply of the brain and that will lead to the ischemic stroke so what this emboli will do this emboli will be fixing inside the artery and it will block the blood supply all of a sudden and that blockage will permanently cut off the blood supply to the brain and when the permanent cut of blood supply inside the brain tissue will occur or any part it can ventricular spaces also what will lead it will lead to the lackage of the blood supply prolonged lack of the blood supply will lead to the ischemic conditions and finally that particular part will get damaged right and that ultimately will lead to the ischemic stroke so what is the two reasons behind that first one is thrombus second one is emboli okay now what can be the causes through which either thrombus or emboli it is forming what can be the causative factors that is provoking inside the body to form the clot it can you know the clot can form by so many conditions first if the patient is having any kind of cardiovascular disorders example atrial fibrillations now look at this image very carefully here what happened in atrial fibrillations cases the atrium is not having that power to contract or decontract right so remaining of the blood inside the artery will be prolonged time so when the blood is prolonged time it's remaining what is happening the clot is forming right so from the then that clot full blood that clot full blood when it will come to the ventricle if the clotting blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle it's coming and from the right ventricle if the clot is moving towards the lungs it can lead to pulmonary embolism or else if the right sorry the left atrium to the left ventricle if the clot blood is coming and if it is traveling through the common carotid artery to the brain it can form a clot and it can lead to the ischemic stroke right so what can be the another causes dcm dilated cardiomyopathy where especially the ventricles will be getting dilate right because of the ventricle myocardium layer will be getting dilate the ventricle will not push the blood towards the aorta right so the blood will remain inside the ventricle and that remaining of the blood will lead to the clot formations and that clot can travel to the brain and it can also causes the ischemic stroke yes or no yes then myocardial infractions is very common right here what is happening the complete heart muscle is getting damaged heart is failing to eject the blood towards the various part of the body so there is a remaining blood that is clotting and then it is leading to the stroke also paradoxical emboli this is a very important one of the informative point for you paradoxical emboli in pediatrics there is a conditions that we call as a hole in heart right if it is not treated what is happening there is a direct communications of the blood from the left sorry right atrium towards the left atrium it means like it is very common inside the fetus when the baby will be there inside the mother roots mother wombs it is happening but after birth this should be closed right so what is happening here the blood will be traveling from the right atrium to the right uh, sorry uh, left atrium right from the right atrium the blood blood is directly shifting towards the left atrium and that process no the blood it's not getting purified properly and that is forming some kind of clot and that clot is moving towards the brain means it can lead to the ischemic stroke okay then what can be the other causative factors that can be see vascular any problem example any phlebitis okay any blood vessels which is getting uh, you know infections so that vascular changes will be there right? the infectious agent they can form a clot and the clot if it is traveling to the brain finally it will lead to the ischemic stroke 
what can be the hematological problem or related to the blood if anything polycythemia vera if, so in polycythemia vera or pcv what is happening there is a rapid production of the rbc from the bone marrow and that rapid production of the rbc will be pressurizing you know pressurizing and it is also forming the clot toward, uh, towards the many part of the arteries and if it is entering into the carotid arteries what is happening there is a clot is forming and that finally prolong prolong time if it is taking that will lead to the ischemic stroke then other can be sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia no there is a uh, you know there is a clogging of the rbc not clotting i am saying it's a clogging it means the structural changes will be there inside the rbc and that will be attaching together in such a way is a it will forming kind of a like blockage okay that's called clogging of the blood cells will be there and that will lead to the clot formations and that clot formations will lead to the restrictions of the blood flow to the brain and finally it can lead to the ischemic stroke okay randomly you no know, don't write the causes without understanding when you're writing the causes you have to understand that how it is progressing to that particular conditions for any conditions i'm talking okay not only for the stroke for any conditions then hypercoagulopathy it's a conditions where the clotting factors of the blood will have a rapid changes right it is actually increasing so that if the clotting factor if it is increasing the blood have a tendency to form the clot first first right and that clotting if it is happening inside the body it can travel it can uh, you know it can be uh, blockage for artery fix also right so that blockage will lead to the ischemia and that can lead to the ischemic stroke also and then others causes can be using of ocp oral contraceptive pills if the woman is taking oral contraceptive pills for a prolonged time there is a hormonal disturbance or hormonal irregulations that will lead to the cortical vein thrombosis if the cortical vein thrombosis if it is occurring due to the hormonal irregulations that can form a thrombus and that thrombus can block the arterial blood flow to the brain and that can lead to the ischemia or the ischemic stroke and some drug abuse example like cocaine okay and some you know using of excessive amount of smoking cigarettes nicotine tobacco such kind of product no what it will do it will significantly change the blood volume density everything the blood pressures also will be increasing and that conditions can you know increase the chances of forming the clot right and it can also finally lead to the ischemic stroke okay so these are the ischemic stroke thrombus and the emboli two causes and these are the causative factors that what all the causes can lead to a formations of clot and ultimately that clot or emboli will lead to the ischemic stroke so now uh, i have one one more extra informations okay that how can we predict the ischemic stroke and one more thing do you know that this ischemic stroke usually occur during the sleep time okay the reason can anybody explain i'll explain why because ischemic stroke the main causes is either plaque clot or emboli when we are sleeping during that time our blood flow it's little bit reducing right and the reduction of the blood flow along with such conditions will increase the chances to form the clot because the pressures will not have that much so there is a chances the blood clot is forming and during the sleep time the patients may get stroke so i think uh, maximum time this is happening at night okay when the patient is sleeping you have heard the patient has had a stroke 
so that is a maximum chances of a ischemic stroke okay so if someone asks you that why the patients when they will sleep this kind of stroke will occur the simple answer when we are sleeping there is a you know the blood circulations will be get less and that along with such conditions will provoke the formations of the clot much more in a faster rate and that is why during the sleep only this kind of stroke especially the ischemic stroke is occurring okay so now we will study the most most important thing that how can we predict the ischemic stroke in future okay based upon some criteria there is a format there is a scale there is a parameters through which we can predict the ischemic stroke in prior months okay so let's start with the uh, you know the score or the format we know that when a person is getting ischemia either due to any clot any thrombus or any bleeding inside the brain so that ischemia it means especially in the brain ischemic conditions there are some symptoms the patients may have felt and he came to the hospital with some complete you know uh, complaint that the patient is having some unilateral motor disturbance or any speaking problems right or any slurred speech right any kind of or any kind of headache the patients may come to you into the hospital so you have uh, find out that the patient is now fine but it is the chances the patient is getting some ischemic stroke to the brain and that is the reason the patient is showing such kind of signs and symptoms so you may have find out so there is a score called a b c d 2 score okay so there is a a b c and 1 d and second d that is why a b c d 2 score so through which we can predict the person is at full risk or the persons cannot be also in the risk in the stroke conditions so the through this score we can find out that how much is the patient is at risk to get the ischemic stroke in future so a for age if the patient's age or the person age is above 60 years old they are very prone to get the stroke frequently right so when the person's age will be above 60 years old for them we will give the score 1 right if it is below 60 means put a 0 okay if the b for blood pressures elevations it can be anything either systolic blood pressures high diastolic low either diastolic high systolic is remaining same or the both high it means the systolic and the diastolic both are high so in any of the cases we will give the score of 1 so that is why i mentioned blood pressures elevations c for clinical presentations the patients came to you with the complaint of unilateral motor deficit plus speech problem so for them the two conditions is there so for them we will give the score to if the patient is having only speaking problem like any you know slurred speech or any dissociative like speech uh, problem so which may have you have found that this can be a ischemic attack so for them we will give the score of one when only in the cases of speech problem but there is no motor you know motor problem like body movement problem is same is normal but the speech problem is only is there for them we will give the score of one now the first d will indicate as a the patient has a diabetes or the patient is on diabetes medicines so for them we will give the score one and another d is the duration of ischemic attack okay that when the patient has such symptoms 
for how long it was there if it is less than 60 minute we will give them one if it is more than 60 minute to 24 hours or more we will give them the score two so this is the classical you know stroke predictions formula please take a screenshot of that so you can write it and you can uh, mention in your copy also this is very important actually okay so what is the total score one two four five six seven and eight nine so nine is the maximum score so who is at the risk to get the stroke in future the person whose total score according to this format will be seven or more than seven so they are at the highest risk so the persons can get ischemic stroke within few days or within few months anytime it can occur okay but we have to take a precautions for that as soon as possible then who is the safe zone whose score will be less than six right they are at the safe zone so they have a less chances to get the ischemic stroke if they are following some lifestyle modifications along with some treatment okay if they are following they have a very less chance so they may not get the stroke but those score will be more than seven or seven to nine they are at the highest risk to get the ischemic stroke in future so this is the classical format which is known as a b c d 2 and a for age b for blood pressure c for clinical presentations d for diabetes or diabetes medications then another d for durations of ischemic attack okay you can take a snap right so with this we have completed our first part of the stroke in the second part we will discuss about the other things like pathophysiology signs and symptoms the diagnostic evolutions and the most vital part that is the management of the stroke so we'll see you in the next classes if you like our classes, please hit the like button, share the videos and definitely don't forget to subscribe the channel. We'll see you soon. Thank you.